Well, the two patients had the same diagnosis, but they were quite different as far as their medical history. The first patient had had the diagnosis of primary hyperparathyroidism and had a surgery to cure that at an outside hospital. And they failed in curing it. And the reason they failed was that they took out some parathyroids, but not the parathyroid adenoma, which happened to be in the chest. And upon reviewing the case, and we were asked to consult on it and to discover why that first surgery didn't work, we made the discovery that, in fact, there was a parathyroid in the chest, and that's why the surgery didn't work. And so then we were able to offer the patient this minimally evasive approach to removing the parathyroid from deep down in the chest in front of our heart. The second patient uh, presented to us with the diagnosis, but uh, on the initial workup, it was diagnosed as being in the chest, so that uh, the initial diagnosing doctor was uh, fortunate that they were able to find it in the chest and save the patient a uh, unnecessary neck surgery. But the fact of the matter remained that it was in the chest and was going to have to be removed. And this second patient was a young, healthy, active woman who didn't want her chest split if that could be avoided. And so she was uh, naturally interested in having a minimally invasive approach to be able to remove the lesion from the chest and save her the pain and discomfort and recuperation of a standard chest operation. Well, both of these have been surgical successes, and how do we know that? Well, we know because we removed uh, the parathyroid adenoma and it was positively identified by a gamma counter, which measures uh, radioactivity. The patient was given a radioactive tracer injection prior to surgery. But we also, here at UMS, have an intraoperative rapid uh, parathyroid hormone assay. So while the patient is on the table, we can measure the assay before the intervention af and after the intervention. And there's standards of how much of a drop you need in order to determine surgical success. And both of these patients ha were successful. They've subsequently been followed up postoperatively and those laboratory uh, results have been confirmed. Well, this is really cutting edge. This is to the best of our knowledge, uh, the third and fourth cases done in the United States within the first couple of dozen done in the world and the first ones done in Arkansas. And I think this demonstrates um, a good stewardship of the robot, which was provided in part by state funding. It also shows that practitioners here at UAMS using the robot are looking for new and innovative applications for the robot. And because we're using the robot on our Kansans, the Arkansans that come here are benefiting from the novel use of the technology.